hope everyone is doing well. I hope you're finding ways to cope with the very, very frightening times we live in right now. Myself, I'm coping by uh, painting some uh, mean 13 Tudor figures here. Uh, these are going to be Chicago Bears. And I'm modeling them after this uniform, which is uh, Tudor stock figures. Real nice paint job on these. Now you will notice that the stripe on Tudor's figures appears to just be an orange stripe on the pants. That's a little anachronistic with the Bears uniform, which should be a white stripe with orange trim. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to pull that off on these figures. Um, I may also opt for just an orange stripe. And as far as the shoulder stripes, I cannot focus with this. You can see it's an orange stripe inside a Ritterlich blue stripe. And again, I'm going to attempt that on these figures, but I, there's no guarantee I can pull that off. And I also added the little orange socks to the uh, Tudor figures here. Now, you can, probably can't see, but there's also black uh, tights, black leggings between uh, the socks and the blue pants, but that's not going to show up on camera here. And of course, uh, these came with the Bears C decal on both sides of the helmet. And I've added the uh, jersey um, decals to this figure. And a face mask and a chin strap. I won't be adding chin straps to these, but I certainly will be uh, adding face masks. I have just enough for this final batch of... 57 here. So let's just look at them one by one. I haven't applied any of this striping yet. This is just the basic figure. You would probably recognize this as a Chicago Bears figure in person, even though this sort of the pants and the helmet kind of look black on camera here. They are a very deep Ritterlich blue. That's the, the Tudor color that came with the Paint a Team kit or Create a Team kit. Pretty happy with the detail there on the you simply cannot see it because it won't stay in focus. But I did all right with the uh, de detail on the hand there holding the football. And uh, you know, these probably wouldn't uh, hold up to standards beneath uh, a large magnifying lens or uh, a high-resolution photograph. Um, and they probably wouldn't even hold up to scrutiny in bright light. Let's test this. Um, actually looks pretty good to me. I'm not happy with the way t the Tudor white paint uh, sticks. It's going to require a second coat. But, uh, pretty clean lines. Not a lot of major problems painting these. There's a lot of criticism of these Mean 13 figures because of two things. One is that they don't really have a neck and the helmets are too small. And I do agree with that. And the other is that they're not beefcake, and that's not so much a big deal for me. Not all football players look like the Incredible Hulk, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with these figures. They, they are more difficult to paint than Fab Five figures, and we'll talk about the, the particular ones that are in a moment. Now, this one's pretty easy to paint. Uh, this is either going to be a tackle or a, a linebacker. Not sure which yet. Uh, I've already done the socks on all these. They look okay. Um, still unclear whether I'm going to try to draw a uh, orange stripe and then try to draw a smaller white stripe down the middle and on the shoulders a, a blue stripe with an orange stripe in the middle of that. We'll see if it works. If it doesn't, we'll just paint orange stripes on this and we'll be done. Eh, you can sort of see a problem there on the helmet. And there's also some excess flash I failed to trim off that I've now painted over, so... Took three coats on the bases, the green viper green color, to uh, uh, make that look good. And you can see a little issue with the shoe there where I um, failed to paint the green or probably paint it over with the white. That's probably what happened. But otherwise, it looks okay. These will work fine for playing football. They're maybe not so good as display units or featured on in photographs on the MFCA Facebook group. But 
they'll be perfect for playing football. Okay. Let's look at this one. This is a running back. Could also be a, a wide receiver. He looks okay. I do apologize that this doesn't really focus up close. I mean, I can hold it here for five minutes and it'll never focus. So, And I don't really know how to operate this phone to make it focus. You're always shooting for clean lines between the light and the dark colors. And um, the helmet is tricky. Because you always bleed, because they, these figures have no necks to speak of. And you, you sort of bleed over onto the jersey. And then when you try to clean the jersey, you bleed over onto the helmet. You sort of have to compromise. All right. Oops. Uh, probably going to put another coat of white on all these jerseys tonight and tackle the um, stripes tomorrow. Might even try painting a couple of helmet logos since I have a finite number of those. I only have 11 times 2, 22 uh, Chicago Bears logos decals. So I'll put, you know, a. 11 sets of those on these figures and then with the two left over i'll try to freehand paint it and see what it looks like hopefully i can pull it off um again it's, it's all about clean lines between light and dark and i feel like i've achieved that on this figure at least looking at it through the camera here now again up close with my granny glasses on i see all kinds of of issues now showcase this gentleman first um you can see there's some, I'm going to need to take some flesh tone there and repaint the helmet just, or the, the face just a little bit. You can see there's some uh, primer still visible where I failed to paint either the helmet or the face. So we'll have to address that. But yeah, you can't tell from this video at all, but I think the jerseys need another coat of white on them. I did use uh, a combination of a brush, not even a fine brush. This is just a very cheap brush I got at a local superstore a few months back. And uh, toothpicks. Toothpicks are what I use to get into the really hard to reach places. Um, these uh, degrade pretty fast, so toothpicks aren't that expensive, so that's not a big deal now. All these brushes I found are have have gone bad. I mean, you probably can't tell by looking at them, but there's a lot of uh, crinkly bristles and stray bristles that that make trying to paint, you know, solid uh, lines uh, an absolute nightmare. So I'm writing these off, and you know, some of these were incredibly expensive. So I will never pay a lot of money for brushes that won't last that long ever again. Uh, I'd rather look at the brushes as disposable commodities and and be able to afford to paint these figures than get a bunch of high priced brushes and and get one project use out of them and then they're, and then they they fail after that they they're ruined that brush right there was at one point the best brush because it's such a small tip on it I was able to do some really nice. Uh, lines with that, but alas It doesn't work very well anymore now. These are fiddly these linemen figures in the center uh, You almost have to freehand that arm because Some of these figures the castings the molds on these it uh, no longer exists Let's look at it one more time um, I'm real happy with the, the distinction between the hand and the football there and you can sort of see a problem there on the helmet that I might need to address. Once you put the face mask on, the detail between the helmet and the flesh tones is sort of a, a moot point. But let me look at it with my own eyes here. Yeah, that's actually an anomaly with the uh, shoulder sculpt, I think, causing that disparity there. The mold down the middle, it looks like. A little higher on the the back side of the mold than the front side. Um, let's see, here's the another uh, lineman figure, and yeah, not as clean as I'd like. I mean, 
I suppose that's a little realistic in that how, you know, the pants and the jersey won't be straight and trim. Uh, there will be sort of a, uh, uh, you know, wrinkles and stuff in the fabric. Um, again, looks like I mean, did you go over this with the flesh tone to fix some problems there on the uh, helmet? I did a great job on this arm. Um, you probably can't really see it, but it almost looks like he's, you can almost see his knuckles. And that's pretty cool considering that there are no knuckles there. Um, all right. Now, let's go ahead and showcase this lineman. Did okay on that one too. Um, you know, there's a problem on the foot there. I don't know if I'll worry with that or not. It's easy enough to just take a toothpick and dip it in some Viper Green and fix that if you're careful. Um, now, there is a problem there on his neck. Uh, might need to, again, probably sh all the faces could stand another coat of paint. I might do that later on tonight, too. Uh, let's see, here we have another running back. These will look pretty good with jerseys on, I or with the uh, jersey numbers and, and all the other decals. But again, I'm going to paint the stripes. Okay. And I'm probably going to put another coat of paint on. There's a, a wide receiver. Pretty good. Did the best I could there at his neckline, the seam there. It's just, I, that's just, you know, without a neck to uh, separate them, it, it is a little fiddly to, to get in there. I do agree that some of the helmets on these figures need to be a little bigger. And, uh,. And it would be nice if they had a, a neck to support their heads, but I'm I'm not too concerned about them not being beefcake. I mean, this this guy's pretty stout, but again, he just doesn't have a neck. But these are the best alternative when you're on a budget for figures with different poses than the Fab Fives, which again are pretty, in my opinion, are, are pretty easier to paint than these. But I do like this variety. I don't know if I'll get any more of these. The next figures I order, I'll probably just get a bunch of Fab Fives. Hopefully they'll be on sale. That would really help me out if they were. And uh, this is an example, I think, of what people have a problem with. This is this is not a linebacker or a lineman. This is uh, either a cornerback or a safety or possibly a, a punt returner or a kick returner. Um, he's, you know, he's just not a game day physique. And, and I think people... A lot of coaches prefer those large bulky figures, but I'm okay with these, especially for the price. All right, and one more. Um, well, yeah, that one was fiddly right there on the shoulder there, between the shoulder and the helmet. You might be able to see. Yeah, that's probably as good as that one's going to get. And again, when you look at these from... A bird's eye view, you know, on the electric football field, they don't have to be super detailed. I like for them to be. I have a pretty high standard on that, but I don't lose a lot of sleep if if there are issues. I mean, going back and looking at my Pittsburgh Steelers, the helmet stripes on almost all of them are too thick, but there's no way I can get them any thinner uh, without using decals. They're pretty straight, though, and I'm, I'm happy about that. So that's where I am on this. It's going to take probably another week to to get these ready to paint after a, or get these ready to decal, but it will be a long time before I decal. I want to get through the other 44 Fab Five figures painted and just decal everything at once. But after I'm happy with the, the paint itself on these, I'll use some Tudor brush sealer to uh, uh, maintain the integrity of the, the paint itself. There's really not much more to do on these. I'm just doing it a little at a time, and I, I try not to waste too much paint. Yeah, it's it's bothersome when you you put out paint, you finish your painting, you're gonna do now, and then you still got a bunch of paint in your palette that's ruined, it's gone, and they can't be used again. So I do try to be sparing with uh, my paint, especially uh, especially right now, because it is a finite commodity. Still have quite a bit of it, but I want to have enough to get through all the the projects I want to complete.
But yeah, I think another coat of white paint on the jerseys and maybe another coat of flesh tones on all their faces is in order tonight. And after that, we'll try to tackle stripes tomorrow. Maybe just the leg stripes tomorrow and then the shoulder stripes day after tomorrow, depending on how the leg stripes go. But anyway, that's what I'm doing today, guys. And I hope you are uh, finding a creative outlet as well to take your mind off things. That's really important right now, I think. I mean, obviously, taking care of yourselves and your family comes first and takes priority over any hobby, but it sure is nice to have something to, uh, something to do in all the downtime that comes between taking care of your family and your pets and yourselves. Well, let me know if you have any questions about painting techniques. I don't know if I have a whole lot of insight on it. I can simply tell you about how I do it and what works for me. You know, the best advice I can give with toothpicks is uh, make sure there's enough paint on the toothpick and just commit to the stroke. And uh, a lot of times you're simply just pushing paint with the toothpicks. Now, brushes is another matter. With brushes, you can't, you don't want to use too much paint. Otherwise, you could uh, make a big mess. But the good news with painting electric football figures is no matter how many mistakes you make, you can simply paint over those to, to clean it up. Okay, guys. Have a great day. Stay safe. Talk to you soon.